Uh, Carlos, a question has come from our Instagram um, about your credentials being a master sommelier. How long did you study for the master som test that you felt confident you were ready? I mean, of course, wow. your whole world experience comes into it, but just sitting down and actually studying, did you have cards and stuff like that? Yeah. Like flashcards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, you want to, you know, you want to, you want to give it to story me. Or, yeah. Give it to me. Um, so basically, um, well, when I start working in Lisbon in my first, in my Michelin star restaurant, uh, in my first Michelin star restaurant, which was my dream restaurant when I was in hospitality school, I was only 16. When I finally started working there, I was like 18 years old. And, um, uh, finally, when I got the opportunity to work with the wines, I discovered some crazy stuff. Some, you know, Spanish Vega Sicilia and uh, the German uh, Trocken Birin Auslöser and American California, you know, um, Cabernet Sauvignons. And I was like, wow, what is this? This is pretty cool. So I wanted to start learning about wine. And because I was on a waiter team, I started buying all the grape, all the books and stuff I could buy about wine, start learning. And then finally I got, um, you know, one of my managers saying, well, if you want to be a serious sommelier, if you want to learn about wine, you got to go to London and work at Gordon Ramsay, three Michelin star, and you got to work with his master sommelier. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I mean, look, it took me a few shots before I got that job, but I finally started working there. Uh, and I started working with, uh, with his master sommelier. Uh, in another restaurant because he, uh, in the meantime, he moved on, et cetera, et cetera. But finally, I started working with him and that's where it all started. So from that moment on... How old are you then? Um, 21, 2021. Ah, super young. So 2021, it took me literally um, 10 years. Look, from the moment I start working as a wine professional, as a sommelier and start learning from the very basic until I passed the master sommelier exam, was 10 years. Now, the program of the court of master sommeliers was six years. Wow. Um, and that is, you know, yes, flashcards and the room full of wine maps. And um, uh, it's yeah. It's pretty crazy that, you know, off the top of your head, you can tell me all the appellations in France. That's just ridiculous. Now, for people who don't know how many there are, either, either did I until I Googled it. And wow, that's just that's just in your yeah, dome. Over 200. It's crazy. Over, over. yeah. Um, so well over what exam or training prep did you take before the exam specifically in those last few days? What were you doing? Oh, very good. On the very last few days, do nothing on the last, very oh. last few days. Well, okay. So on the first year, uh, on the first is very funny because on the first year of my, um, uh, master sommelier attempt on the first year of my master sommelier attempt, I, it was my, it was the year of my brother's wedding and, uh, this is 2017 and, uh, the old time, even in, including on his wedding day, I studied like three, four hours before the wedding and, um, and I moved, I went to London to take the exam and then straight away, you know, came to Australia. I used all my holiday to study and I was putting so much pressure. I would go to bed. 3, 4 a.m., wake up at 9 a.m. to go to work. So it was just like unbalanced, okay? So it's no good. It's not the way to study. Uh, on the second year, I learned meditation. I learned... So you to... failed that year, sorry? Is that what uh, you no, said? no, I, I passed one part, but I failed two parts. Okay. So I passed my practical, but I still failed tasting and uh, theory. And So I when you I... go back the next year, you only have to do the two you haven't I got. only have to do the two, but I also, I also only have two more years to pass the whole thing. Oh, otherwise it just resets. Yeah, otherwise oh, resets from zero. <laughs> it's not that interesting. <laughs> no, that is. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, that's it, yeah. Um, and on the second year, I went back to obviously do tasting and theory. And I, uh, yeah, I had like 4,000 cards. Each card had, you know, one, two or three questions. So imagine multiply that by at least, you know, two yeah. average. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, a lot of maps, a lot of tasting. I would taste every single day, two or three times, six wines, blind tasting. And um, it was just a lot of work, for, of course. But um, And I learned how to, how to kind of relax a little bit more, switch off, you know, um, and do exercise, eat healthy, and, uh, and that start helping a little bit. So on that year, I passed my tasting, uh, which, well, I mean, is, you know, 
in the whole world, there was only two people that pass. Any Australian wines in your flight that year or, or um, any along the journey? There was an Australian Shiraz. Well, look, we never know because we don't know. Oh, they don't give you the results. They at don't the give end. you the results. Is ah. is they keep it secret? But I. So you have eight wines to taste. Six, six, six wines. And three how many wines, do you have to get right? Uh, look, it's uh, it's depending, really depending on your um, on your tasting, how much you are scoring. So you may get four wines and pass if you have absolute outstanding like tasting notes, and you know you can very close. Or you you get your seventy five mark and you pass. Uh, if you under seventy five, you just don't make it. Uh -huh. um, so but you, you don't necessarily. Score. You can get like eighty percent of the wine right and just get the wrong oh, region can, right. You can get. But you still get points for that because you were, you can get a hundred percent of the wines right. But if you say that uh, if you call it the Chablis and you say because you're so nervous, it can happen. You will completely lose the track of, of what you're doing. Um, if you call it a Chablis and you say it's low acid. For example, it just like it just does never ever happen, even in a hot vintage in Chablis, you know, which yeah does not happen. You know what I mean? So it means you're not really tasting accordingly to how it should taste like. So you may not you may not pass. So yeah, that was the second year, and then on the third year was when I finally passed the the exam, uh, and I was only missing theory. That year was amazing because I learned, you know, meditation. I was doing yoga. I was going to the gym. I was training for Ironman. I was um, doing intermittent fasting. You know, I was the, my my brain, my mind was so so focused uh, that there was no way I was ever gonna fail that. And um, yeah, and there was another thing like memory techniques help a lot. Uh, you know, memorized by, you know, memory places and then you add more knowledge to the top and more knowledge. And mm. you, the moment you visualize each room, uh, you tagging knowledge, information to, to everything you can see. So if I close my eyes, even now after, you know, it's been two years that I've passed the exam and I haven't done much since, but if I close my eyes and I travel through these memory places, I have like 60 or 70 memory places. My mom house, my grandma house, my <laughs> auntie house, my the moon, the, you know, everything. Uh, I can tag more and more information to this. But by closing the eyes and revisiting those places, I see knowledge coming up. It's crazy how it works. But yeah. then again, you got to be healthy. You got to be fit. You got to uh, feel good. You have, you know, create um, a good atmosphere around you. Surround yourself with people that you enjoy and like. And of course study but you know if you really put the hard work in studying in learning in being the best you can be when it comes to the show day you just go for the show you know and and days before as the question came you know days before you literally just relax uh call the people that you love the most and you know enjoy uh, a little bit because the hard work has been done and the last few days you're not going to learn you're just going to mix up your brain love it and yeah. was, did you find it easy because that first year, obviously trying to get all three distinctions oh, correct, yes. then all of a sudden oh. the next year's only two, yeah. and then the third year's only one, that yeah. probably made it a little bit easier, right? But also, yeah. the pressure of the reset coming there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's insane. Look, I, I worked incredible. I probably worked the hardest on the first year. Mm -hmm. It was just not right. I was just not doing it right. I would finish uh, work at 11, 12 a.m., 1 a.m. I would study until 4 or 5 a.m. And I would order a pizza or burger because I wanted to keep, to stay awake uh, yeah. until it arrives. So I'm taking, you know, I'm, you know, finding an excuse to study while the pizza arrives. I eat, I study a bit more while I'm awake, go to bed, go to bed 4 or 5 a.m. Thinking that I put so much effort, but the effort was in vain because in fact, um, I was not memorizing anything because the brain was just too tired after... 13, 14 hours of work, you're trying to memorize, it just just does not sink in. So yeah, that for me was to go back, to go to bed early, wake up super early, do exercise, the meditation, the eating healthy, and then and then yeah, the study. So just to let people know, there's less than 300 master sommeliers in the world with the pin that you wear during our <laughs> podcast, which we love. For I, today, yes. Yeah, I demanded it. Um <laughs> How many people do apply each year and how many get in usually? Uh, 
Yeah, well, for the master sommelier exam, you have to wait for, well, first of all, for your spot um, and then for the invitation. So oh, you, so they you, cap it. So you can't just rock up. No, no. You have to first pass the, the first three levels. Yeah. So introductory, certified, which you can take on the same day. Say if you... Say if you decide to go through the Court of Master Sommelier programs, which I think you will go one day. Of course. You will do introductory and certified on the first uh, on the first day. Uh, and then you have to wait one year until you get onto your advanced level, which is number three, level three. And that is incredibly hard already. That's uh, that's a mini master um, sommelier already. So it's exactly the same. Uh, the same way you have to do your MS is just that instead of seventy-five uh, percent, you you have to pass with sixty percent. So and but sixty percent to seventy-five percent of you know Big what jump. the world the wine, wine is, is yeah. it's it's huge. And um, how many people apply? Uh, I I don't have those numbers, but in the US is uh, each year there is about I would say one hundred and forty people uh, that attempt uh, the master sommelier exam because they do two different seatings and I. Th- I strongly believe there's about 70 people in each, so 140. In Europe, is much less. Yeah. Uh, in Europe, is I'm not totally sure of the numbers, but uh, 20, 30 people. What are we saying? Like 5% of people make it? Less than? Uh, yeah, under, under 5%, yeah. Wow. Crazy. 5%, 7%, yeah. Well, that's the credentials we have for this podcast. We are lucky <laughs> enough to use that expertise to dumb it down for us mere grape mortals, and we get to learn how to taste wine, which wines are which, and the goal... What's the best $30 bottle of wine in the country? 